this is the Veilton GP5. And that's how small the screen is. So how do you edit presets on a screen that small? Well, you can't. You use an app. And the app is either on a phone or on a tablet. Now, some people don't mind this way of working, but personally, I prefer a workflow where I can use a desktop app with a device and edit on screen. That's how I work with my Fender Tone Master Pro, but Veilton haven't released an official desktop app for the GP5. However, someone from the Veilton Facebook community has released an app, and today I'm gonna see if it works. I'm part of the Veilton GP series Facebook group. It used to be the GP5 Facebook group, but they've expanded that now. Um, because I think there's some new products coming out soon. And there's a member called Rene Valadares who has been releasing some alpha releases of a desktop editor for the Veilton GP5. So I'm gonna look at that now. You can see on screen, I've gone to his website. It's a web-based app, obviously. And you can see at the top left here, it says Connect GP5. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna do. I have my GP5 plugged in via USB. It asks to pair. So I press the pairing button on the GP5. Okay, so now I am paired with my pedal. I can see that it's on zero, zero preset, great pedal. Let's hear that it's working. Now to prove that it's working, I'm gonna select another preset from the list. And if we go down, you can actually see all of my presets are in here too. So I know that it's actually connected. So if I go to the HG Eagle 120, which is a recent one that I set up, which is a heavy kind of preset. I can go into the settings. So you can see here the reverb settings, cab settings, if I want to add a delay, I can turn that on. Sweet echo setup for a lead sound. And of course, I can change any of the settings in here using these sliders instead. So I can turn the mix up, I can turn the time up, and the feedback, let's go crazy. I can change all my cabs and my IRs as well. You can see here I'm using the IR, which is an origin effects, British Marshall kind of style, four by 12. But I can go back up and I can use, I don't know, Foxy 112. So let's create a preset using a blank slate so I can show you how it all works. The first block in the GP5 is noise reduction and you just have a gate that's uh, available at the moment. Let's not turn that on yet. Second one is pre, and pre is basically a set of uh, compressors and boosts, but it also has like an octave effect, pitch and detune. I've tried these before, they're not great. Cryer is an auto wah. I've never used it, so let's put that on. Then we have the overdrives and distortions, which you can see here. Let's try the plus distortion but we're gonna need an amp first, otherwise this can sound terrible. So actually, let's jump ahead. Let's get an amp going. Uh, something that takes pedals. Uh, maybe let's go with a Lone Star. So this is a clean Lone Star, I think. <laughs> let's just turn this off for a second. Let's get the amp set up. And um, we're gonna need a cab. So let's go with uh, the 112 that's paired with it. Okay, I want to, I'm gonna give it a bit more top end. And let's go back to the cab. I'm actually gonna go with the Dark CS212. Now let's go back to the pre and turn on the crier. Okay, so this just basically has an LFO. That's not really what I want anyway. So let's change that. Oh, here we go, touch wah. Okay, we'll stick with that. 
So that sounded quite dry. Let's add a reverb. That's the last block, and we can turn that on here. Alright, uh, let's also add some uh, modulation, maybe a jet flanger. Alright, let's try this uh, plus distortion. You have a few options here, EQ1, EQ2, two bass EQs and then the Mesa EQ from their amp which looks like that. So you can use that to boost and cut certain frequencies. So let's take some of the bass out, boost some of the mids. Then you have a delay block as well, so we could just turn that on for a... I feel like the ring echo would be a good mix with this uh, strange sound that I've created. The only block I haven't used is this one, which is the NAM loader. Um, so if I wanted to use this NAM loader instead, I could just go like this, turn that on. That will turn off the amp and it'll turn off the cab. And then you got to hope that it's got a cab. Oh, nope, it doesn't. I'm not really a fan of the NAM feature yet. I'm yet to sort of utilize it properly, but I prefer just having an amp model that I can tweak as if it's a real amp, but you know, whatever. It's there as a feature if someone wants to use it. Let's look what else is available. You've got obviously a save patch button here. You've also got patch settings, so you can go into the patch settings here and change the CTL. And the CTL is basically if you set it up as a foot switch so that you can press the foot switch and it'll change it to a second um, sort of patch inside the preset and you can say which of these you want to enable or disable when you press that button. So let's set this up. Let's say we want no delay and no EQ for the, for the main sound. And then we go into patch settings and we say for CTL, we want to change the EQ and delay. So now press the foot switch. You also have global settings, so you can change your input level, you can change recording level, the Bluetooth level, and the monitors level as well, and you can change the foot switch settings. So I have it set to control or CTL. You can change that to tuner. That means that when you press the button now, it will go into tuner mode instead, or you can set it to go from zero to 99, so you cycle through all 99 presets, zero to nine, so it goes from zero to nine presets, which I don't know how anyone can use it like that, or A to Z. Personally, I just use it for one sound, so that's um, what I leave it on. A better way to use this live would be to have a separate MIDI controller so that you can assign presets to different foot switches and use that to control your different sounds. I just want to show you another preset that I set up. This is my Iron Maiden uh, preset.
and I've set this up as well with the foot switch so I can turn off the delay. Although I haven't tried it and I don't have any way to test this, there's also a link here to a BT MIDI controller. If you click on the link, it takes you to the GP5 controller here. You can connect this to your GP5 and an external MIDI controller, and then I assume you can assign these different uh, blocks here to different foot switches. So definitely check this out as well. So there you have it, that's the desktop GP5 editor from Rene Valadares. I will put the link in the description below. If you use this app and you enjoy it, make sure you click on the buy me a coffee link here and send him a little bit of money to say thank you. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.